Hey YouTube, welcome back to Tech Yes, it is Brian Easy coming back to you guys today with a quick video on how to certify your power supply for Haswell. Now when Haswell came out, there was this whole big thing around the internet that you may need a new power supply for Haswell, and that's a complete load of crap. You do not need a new power supply, especially if your power supply is a really expensive power supply that is still running fine. Now, the whole worry uh, with this whole thing was that there's two power states with Haswell the C6 and C7 states, which are the hibernation states, and I'll show you how to disable that later. These C states, um, basically when, when the CPU, the Haswell CPU goes into these sleep states or these hibernation states, it draws 0.05 amps. As opposed to the previous generation, which is the Ivy Bridge CPUs, they only drew 0.5 amps. Now the big worry was that some power supplies may not be able to supply such subtle voltages. And I'm here to say, if you guys are desktop users like me, you can just disable hibernation and free up some space on your hard drive as well, if you're at SSD as well. Uh, for me, it's precious space. So let's get onto it. I'm gonna quickly show you guys how to disable hibernation if you didn't already know. I'm also, after that, I'm gonna quickly talk to you guys and give you guys an update on my Haswell CPU and how overclocking is going for me at the moment. So once you're in Windows, all you have to do is go down to the bottom left here, click on the start menu, and then just type in here, command, you can also type in CMD as well, that should bring it up as well. And just go to this little friend here, command prompt, right click on that, click run as administrator, and then click yes. And now we should be here, and all we have to do is type in power CFG slash H, I mean sorry, hyphen H, and then off, and then hit enter. And that will turn off hibernation. It will also free up space on your C drive. So if your C drive is an SSD, you're gonna get 75% of your RAM space back. So for me, that's 12 gigabytes of SSD space. So it really does help. Uh, personally, I also disable sleep states as well. So you can do that if you go into power options as well. Um, personally, I just, you know, if I'm letting my computer rest, I just turn it off and turn it back on. It takes like five seconds if you have an SSD. So that's my, person, that's my personal preferences. And congratulations, after you've done that, your Haswell CPU is now, uh, your Haswell power supply is now Haswell certified. So there you go, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Also, I'm going to quickly say that I am not very pleased with Haswell this time around. There's a lot more variables involved in overclocking these things, and the stability is very questionable. I mean, I can run my computer at 4.4, 4.6 for literally 10 hours on a stress test. And then something simple like using Skype, like not like gaming's fine as well. I can stress test, I can render videos, game, but then when I'm on the desktop checking email using Skype, it crashes. It's completely a really, I have to get to the bottom of it. I believe it's the memory. Uh, the CPU doesn't like even any changed uh, clocks on the memory, like even 1866, it crashes. So I'm testing that at the moment, guys. I gotta get, I'm gonna bring out a full thorough a detailed Haswell overclocking tutorial as well. In the meantime, I will recommend Ivy Bridge over Haswell if you, if, if especially if it's your first build, if, especially if it's your first rig. I mean, this, you know, Ivy was so easy, it was so user friendly. All you had to do was bash in the overclock, bash in the voltage, bash in your RAM clocks, and it pretty much all worked. So, Haswell, I'm going to say that Intel are really not uh, making a fan favorite in the enthusiast market. You know, they're they knew as enthusiasts that we wanted the you know the heat spread had soldered to the die but they just ignored us they put a voltage regulator in there which just creates more heat and not only that there's a lot more variance in Haswell as well not only and I'm finding it's not just with the clocks my CPU can get up to 4.8 that's fine but what I'm finding is there's lots of variance in the uh, memory controllers as well the IMC's some people can get really high RAM clocks some people can't so I'm really just, yeah, I'm finding there's a lot of variance, which generally, if you have a lot of variance in a product, it generally points to poor quality or poor quality control. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little rant on Intel. I mean, yeah, they've really sort of, you know, my in the respect demeanor, my respect was about halfway. It's, so, it's pretty much on zero now, so with Haswell, I mean, yeah, I mean, the motherboard manufacturers are really carrying this generation of... Uh, Intel so the Z87 motherboard manufacturers deserve a big kudos for sort of giving the nice features on the motherboards anyway guys uh, peace out for now I'll come back to you guys videos as you saw in the previous at the start of the video I had the liquid pro there I'm gonna be testing out all sorts of tests coming in the next uh, month 
definitely a very intricate very detailed test very good thorough reviews coming for you guys and i'll get them done as soon as i can anyways peace out for now bye